Taxes, am I right? Okay, obviously robots can't pay taxes themselves because they're not considered people by the government, although that might be changing. See the video up there for more info. And they don't make money. But as new technologies have allowed companies to process data or create products with fewer humans, many people have proposed the idea of a robot tax, a tax on companies that use automation. So why would we want to tax robots? Well, in the United States, our tax system is fairly people-focused. Companies pay wage taxes at the local, state, and federal levels based on the number of employees they have and the amount that they pay them. This means that when companies start to use automation, they actually pay less in taxes because they have fewer human workers that they're paying wages to. Now, we don't normally hear this as one of the reasons why companies are incorporating more automation into their workflow. Usually, it's more of an argument about productivity and being able to maximize your output. But regardless of the reason you focus on, it's definitely true that companies are increasingly relying on automation to handle certain tasks and that some people have lost their jobs as a result. This can leave people unprepared to re-enter the workforce due to a lack of transferable skills or a lack of retraining opportunities or a lack of access to employment opportunities that are enough to support them and their families. Therefore, a common argument in favor of creating a robot tax is that it would create a fund that would allow for retraining of workers who lost their jobs to automation and would also provide them with financial security during this retraining process. This is especially compelling when you consider that automation tends to increase wealth inequality, so people who are losing their jobs based on this may be worse off than you'd expect. A bit more broadly, increased use of automation means that the workforce, which is comprised of both human workers and automation, is spending less money and paying less in income tax. In fact, a 2017 McKinsey Global Institute report estimated that about 50% of jobs currently could be replaced by automation, and that between 400 and 800 million jobs may be replaced by automation by 2030. While this doesn't address new employment opportunities created in the interim by the development of new technologies, it is a cause for concern when it comes to government funding, which supports the government services that we all benefit from. Here, taxing automation could be used to make up that loss in revenue at the local, state, and federal levels. Now, these all may seem like good reasons to implement a tax on automation, but let's look at the other side of the coin. After all, if it were this simple, then we would have seen someone do this already, right? Well, it turns out that a lot of the arguments in favor of a robot tax are grounded in the idea that automation is going to cause a long-term disruption of our workforce. However, that same McKinsey report that estimated that about 50% of jobs could be replaced by automation right now and that between 400 and 800 million may be replaced by automation by 2030 also predicted that the U.S. employment rate wouldn't change that much. In other words, new technology will bring new employment opportunities, many of which will have those workers who originally lost their jobs working in tandem with new tech. Now, this isn't said there wouldn't be job losses. The report predicts that areas of the U.S. that have already been hit fairly hard by automation, so the rural United States focusing on areas where the economy is largely based around factories, would continue to be hit pretty hard by this. Additionally, retraining opportunities would still need to be made available to anyone who does lose their job. However, several studies conclude that, as a whole, the country would remain fairly unscathed. A robot tax also wouldn't necessarily solve the income inequality issue without other policies implemented in parallel to make sure that that money gets to the people who need it. You can take money from the rich, but if you don't give it to the poor, it doesn't really solve that problem. Most importantly, taxing automation requires us to define automation first. Does a robot tax only apply to robots, or does it also apply to algorithms? If it does apply to algorithms, what kind of algorithms does it apply to? Do you tax based on the use case or based on the technology itself? In other words, is there a scenario where an algorithm might be used and be taxed, but another where it might be used and not be taxed? These are all really important questions that are also really hard to answer, especially given that the technology will continue to evolve as we draft policy around it. It's important to note that all of these arguments, both for and against a robot tax, are based on modeling. These are our best educated guesses for what the future may hold, but they may not be what the future actually looks like. It's entirely possible that automation may cause that long-term disruption in the workforce due to other things that are happening that we just might not know about or might not have been able to predict. Now, this doesn't mean the U.S. tax code is perfect as it is. I'm neither a tax expert nor an economist, but as someone who did their taxes last month, 
I can say with confidence that it would be nice if they were a little bit less confusing, especially for grad students on fellowships. It also doesn't mean that we should never consider the idea of a robot tax. South Korea actually implemented a kind of indirect robot tax by reducing the tax deduction that companies could take for investing in automation. Granted, this is less of an added tax and more of a restriction of existing benefits. Personally, I think there's a lot of valid arguments for why redoing the US tax system would make sense and be a net benefit for people, but I also acknowledge that that's way easier said than done, especially right now when governments currently have something to be much more worried about than taxes. Having said that, I think that some of the more interesting proposals actually have more to do with changing the way that we tax corporations, so not necessarily focusing on the automation itself, but focusing on the companies that are making huge profits where their workers aren't necessarily seeing those same benefits. In that sense, you'd still be taxing companies that are heavily relying on investing in automation, but as always, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. If you like this video, you can let me know by smashing that like button and subscribing to my channel. You can also support me on Patreon. Thank you so much to all of my patrons. I actually have a bit of an announcement on that front. I'm really excited to have recently joined Standard, a sponsorship agency slash consortium of educational creators slash group of pretty cool people. And you'll hear more about that in future videos in terms of what that means for the channel. Don't worry, not a ton is going to change. But otherwise, if you'd like to follow my off YouTube antics, you can find me at my human name on the social medias, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.